Tony Blair and George Bush were faced by disaster. Iraq was imploding. While at home, they were being accused of lying to their own people to justify the invasion. What they desperately needed was something that would show that the invasion was having a good effect in the Arab world. So they made an extraordinary decision. They turned for help to the man who they had always insisted was one of the world's most dangerous tyrants, Colonel Gaddafi. And instead, they set out to make him their new best friend. It was going to be the highest achievement of perception management. A man who had been created by the West as a fake global supervillain was now going to be turned into a fake hero of democracy. And everyone, not just politicians, would become involved. Public relations, academics, television presenters, spies and even musicians were all going to help reinvent Colonel Gaddafi. It would show just how many people in the Western establishment had by now become the engineers of this fake world. Ever since he had been accused of the Lockerbie bombing, Colonel Gaddafi had been a complete outcast. The West had imposed sanctions on Libya and the economy was falling apart. But then suddenly, Tony Blair broke live into the BBC Evening News. The Prime Minister Tony Blair is about to make a statement the BBC understands from Downing Street. It's of international significance. He'll be making his statement at any moment. Now we can see pictures of him in Durham, this evening, Durham City. Here he is. Colonel Gaddafi has confirmed that Libya has in the past sought to develop weapons of mass destruction capabilities. Libya has now declared its intention to dismantle its weapons of mass destruction completely. This decision by Colonel Gaddafi is an historic one and a courageous one, and I applaud it. Today in Tripoli, the leader of Libya, Colonel Muammar al-Qaddafi, publicly confirmed his commitment to disclose and dismantle all weapons of mass destruction programs in his country. Colonel Gaddafi now became, for Western politicians, a heroic figure. His decision to give up his weapons of mass destruction seemed to prove that the invasion of Iraq could transform the Middle East. And Tony Blair travelled to meet Gaddafi in his desert tent to welcome him back into what one journalist called the community of civilised nations. But as in the past, nothing was what it seemed with Colonel Gaddafi. In reality, Gaddafi did not really have the terrifying weapons of mass destruction that he was promising to destroy. His nuclear programme had started to a halt long ago and never produced anything dangerous. He had managed to buy some equipment on the black market, but his technicians had been unable to assemble it. His biological weapons were non-existent. All he had was some old mustard gas in leaking barrels. But now, he had to pretend to have a terrifying arsenal of weapons. And the West had to pretend that they had avoided another global threat. And then the made-up stories became even more complicated. As part of the deal, the West said that if Gaddafi admitted that Libya had done the Lockerbie bombing, then they would lift the sanctions. But many of those who had investigated Lockerbie were still convinced that Libya hadn't done it, that really it had been Syria. But Colonel Gaddafi confessed. His son Saif was interviewed about this confession. He said that his father was simply pretending that he had been behind the Lockerbie bombing to get the sanctions lifted, that new lies were being built on top of old lies to construct a completely make-believe world. You have to accept, or you had to accept at that time, the responsibility because you have to accept responsibilities, you have to pay compensation in order to get rid of the sanction. It means we did that not because we are convinced that we did it, but because to find an exit out of this nightmare. 
So what you're saying is that you accept responsibility, but you're not admitting that you did it? Yes. And this is all a sham, you're saying, just to, just to get sanctions over with so that you can start normal diplomatic relations with okay. the West. Okay. What's wrong with that? It's a very cynical way to, to, to behave as, as a country, isn't it? Many people <laughs> would say. First of all, I mean, the Americans and the British, they told us to write that letter. They told us to pay compensation. And then they opened their embassies and they restored the relation and they came to us. It was their game, not our game. That's great, thank you. Does the, uh, does the leader know there's a picture on the television? Are you going to tell him? Oh, good, thank you. Public relations companies then came to Libya to do what they called reframing the narrative. One firm was paid $3 million to turn Gaddafi into what they described as a modern world thinker. <laughs> 